Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, November 23rd, 5.40 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. December corn futures up one and three quarters at 6.58 and a half. January soybeans up one and a half at 14.31 and a quarter. December Chicago wheat down four and a quarter at 7.87 and a quarter. December Kansas City wheat down four and three quarters at 9.20 and three quarters. December spring wheat up two at 9.48. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. Ratings and reviews, very much welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, leave me a comment. If you guys would like some additional information from me, visit my website, www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service today, guys. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information direct from me every single business day. Morning email goes out about 5.30 a.m. Central. In that email, you'll see every overnight headline you need to be aware of. Charts, graphics, weather information, all my grain marketing recommendations. My daily subscriber-only videos are part of this deal. Yesterday, I talked about uh, the funds and the corn market. Uh, sometimes, I think that the way funds are positioned can be used as a grain marketing tool. It works sometimes. Sometimes, it doesn't. Uh, I gave some historical context, kind of provided the way of the land currently. Is this a risk to the market? Tried to answer those questions yesterday. If you guys are interested in this sort of content, new stuff every business day, uh, sign up today. 50 bucks a month. Cancel at any time. No other fee. No other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. I promise. Mexico will probably allow the import of GMO corn from the United States to continue. The country's president said yesterday that he is softening his stance on the planned 2024 ban on GMO corn imports. Pressure from the U.S. government was apparently a factor here, so GMO corn will now be considered for livestock feed, and this is a big change from previous statements from Mexico and Mexico's president indicating that all GMO corn imports would be banned. President Obrador said yesterday... Yes, there is pressure from foreign companies and foreign governments. We are looking at yellow corn for animal feed. So I think all along we thought it was improbable or impossible that Mexico would be able to replace all of its GMO corn with non-GMO sources. You're talking six or 700 million bushels per year from the United States. A USDA spokesperson said that the agency will continue to engage with Mexico regarding the importance of a bilateral trade relationship. So this is good news. Um, I think Mexico will continue with their impo imports of GMO corn from the United States. Uh, all good stuff here. Brazilian corn exports to China are likely to begin in a more material fashion next year. Uh, Sergio Mendes, the director at Brazilian grain group ANAC, estimates that Brazil could export up to 5 million metric tons of corn to China in 2023. That's almost 200 million bushels. China has never really been a big-time destination for any material amount of Brazilian corn given strict inspection requirements. There has been a recent agreement, however, that will make these larger exports possible. China recently updated, I believe just this month, its list of approved Brazilian corn exporters expanded it to include a whole bunch of other entities. Uh, so there's going to be material amounts of Brazilian corn moving to China. China is seeking alternatives, of course, when it comes to corn because they had previously purchased a good chunk of their corn imports from Ukraine, and that's a, a supply base that's just no longer reliable due to the war and Russia's invasion. So the United States could certainly lose some Chinese corn business to Brazil. I think that's uh, probable, as a matter of fact. Still, this situation does not add or subtract corn from the global balance sheets. So I think it's likely that the U.S. loses some Chinese corn business, but maybe you gain it elsewhere. You're going to see um, kind of a game of musical chairs here to some extent. But um, yeah, Brazil is going to ship some more corn to China. It makes sense. But uh, we may gain here in the United States maybe some export business from some other buyers. COVID restrictions in China are increasing as cases rise. Shopping centers, parks in Beijing were shut down this week. Recent arrivals to the country were banned from restaurants and other venues. News outlets released footage of workers at a Foxconn facility, which is Apple's biggest iPhone manufacturer in China, uh, tearing down barriers and fighting with authorities. One group cited in a Reuters piece this week estimates that areas accounting for 20% of Chinese GDP uh, is under some form of lockdown. Official Chinese numbers indicated more than 29,000 new COVID cases yesterday. That's the highest daily total again since April. Uh, Macquarie's chief economist said this, China might have already passed the point of no return, as it's unlikely to achieve zero COVID again without another Shanghai-style hard lockdown. So same story, different day here. Uh, will this COVID deal in China result in reduced economic activity, reduced demand for grain and oil seeds? Uh, that stuff's all on the table here. 
Congress is probably going to intervene in order to prevent a U.S. rail strike. That's the way that it looks uh, the more that I read about this and the more that we hear from both union leaders and from Congress. Leaders of U.S. rail unions are not optimistic at all when it comes to a deal ahead of this early December deadline. The president of the Smart TD Union, which was the one that voted down an agreement earlier this week, said this. I'm hopeful, but I doubt it's really in the cards. I've got a lot of issues that are outstanding that are reasons why our guys voted it down. He went on to say this. It's such a short time frame. I think we're going to see Congress panic and step in here at some point next week, unfortunately. Another union president said that there has been no progress at all at the bargaining table. Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa spoke yesterday, told reporters that Congress should do exactly the same thing we did 30 years ago, referring to 1991 when lawmakers intervened to end a rail strike in less than 24 hours. Biden's press secretary said yesterday that the president would prefer for the unions and workers to come to an agreement, but that the president is indeed directly involved. No additional details were provided beyond that. So if I had to guess right now, I'd say if there is a plan strike, Congress is going to intervene and uh, kind of stop this. They're going to force some sort of arbitration. That's probably the way that this thing goes as it looks uh, here this morning. Remember, guys, December grain options expire on Friday. Take a look if you've got any remaining open positions. We've got a normal trading day today and then uh, closed, of course, tomorrow for Thanksgiving. So following a normal close today, we'll reopen at 8.30 a.m. Central Time Friday morning. I'm going to be off most of the day Friday, so no videos, podcasts Friday. I'll be back to the normal routine on Monday. Uh, cattle market was mixed yesterday. Feeder cattle were mostly lower, not really much cash trade to speak of. U.S. dollar marginally lower this morning. The S&P's up four, the Dow's up 20. Uh, gold's down a buck. Crude oil now down $2.09 in the January WTI, 78.88 last trade. Have a great day, guys. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. I will talk to you on Monday.